How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another fighting game lecture. In this lecture we're going to be adding our attack trigger state. I'm excited to do that. Before we do, I just want to make the uh, correction from the last lecture. I know I've been kind of going crazy with this setup here, but I had not put this into a function. I completely forgot to. So make sure you put it into a function for our full screen state where you call it nw full screen function. Then in the game event, right where we actually have our functions, that's where I put our F pressed and that's where I called the function. So I hadn't been doing that. I was completely going crazy as to why that wasn't working, but that is the fix for it. And in the start of the layout there, it's going to call the title function. So now when it calls this, it's going to check. Now the last thing is, yes, we are including this in our menu event. We're still including our game event. And then the last fix that I had to do for it that wasn't working was since we put it to our camera object, we need to have our camera object outside of our layout on our menu event. So make sure you do that and everything should be fixed when you hit play. It should load up NWJS and if you hit F on the keyboard, it's going to go to full screen. Hopefully you can see that and then when I hit enter, it's going to go to our game and I can hit F again to exit out of full screen. Cool. So that's our full screen fix. Let's add our attack trigger state, which is something that we really need to have to trigger our attacks. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to go into our states and we're going to right click and add the event called our attack trigger state. Cool. So what we're going to do for our attack trigger state is actually really simple. We've been doing this the entire time. We're going to set it up for our gamepad and for our keyboard. But what we really need to do is we need to make some globals here. So we're going to make global variables. And I think we should probably do this in one central location. So I'm thinking we can do it in our game event here. I don't think it'll be that much of a big deal. So what we're going to do on our game event is we're going to hit V on the keyboard. And we're going to make three global variables. The first one is going to be attack one anims. So that's going to be for attack one animation. So it's going to be our normal attack. And we're just going to have it be a number. And let's actually give it a description so we know what it is. And this is going to be our attack. Or let's, let's call this our normal attack. Normal attack animations. So part of the problem with making a melee game or a fighting game is that you need to have just this overall animator. You need to have an inside animator that's going to control the animations for your melee attack because otherwise Construct 2 can't play the animation and stop the animation on a dime and have things trigger at that. We need a way to trigger these frames. So we're going to actually cycle through these animations on our own. So it'll make more sense as we do our first attack in the next lecture. Let's hit V on the keyboard and let's make another one. Let's call this attack two anims. And this will be for our combo one. So let's say this is combo one attack animations. Let's hit OK. And let's hit V again on the keyboard. And let's call this attack three. So this will be combo two and anims. And then let's say combo two animations. OK, so now hopefully, oops, combo two attack animations. Let me write that in. So now hopefully that you, you have an understanding of what this might do, but if you don't, don't worry, we'll be figuring that out soon. But we need to leave these as globals, so we're going to leave that there. And what we can actually do here is we can just put our start of layout into our game event here, because this is pretty much our game event, and I'd rather these just be a bunch of global variables. Uh, if we group these, they would no longer be global. So it might make sense to put these in a different sheet altogether and just call it global variables and have an entire list, or you can do it inside the list. I know we did that for our camera follow event here, but you could probably want to put everything that's relating to the game in the game event. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our attack trigger state and we're going to set it up for our gamepad and for our keyboard. So we're going to do this simultaneously. So let's go add event. Let's go to our plugins. Let's go to our gamepad and let's say is button pressed on button pressed. So this is player one. So gamepad zero and the button that I want to press is going to be X button X and then I'm going to hit done. So if the button X is pressed, then I want to set attacking to true, but we haven't set that yet. So here's what we're going to do. Go to our entities player, click on our player and add a new instance variable, add it, call it attacking and make it a Boolean. So true or false. And you could give it a description if you want is the player attacking. That way, when you go to check it off, you'll know what it's doing. So if the gamepad button X is pressed, we are going to add the action to go to our entities player player, set the value of uh, nope, 
it's under set boolean attacking is equal to true just like that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to group this so i'm going to select this event hit g on the keyboard and i'm going to group this as our gamepad uh, let's call this gamepad attack and let me put that in there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy and paste this i'm going to edit this and i'm going to call this keyboard attack now I've separated this from our input just because this is a very important trigger. This is going to trigger all of our attacks. So if you had more, you want to have this separate and you might even want to do even all of this separate. I don't know. It's up to you. You could have your attack one trigger separate then your combo one trigger and then combo two trigger could be separate. But we're going to put all this together just to make it easier on us. So what we're going to do next is we're gonna do the inverse here. So we're going to, we can just hit R on the keyboard, but no, just kidding, it doesn't work there. We're gonna delete that then. Double click on the event, go to plugins, keyboard, and we're gonna say on key pressed, key pressed X, just like button X, and hit OK. So now we have two things that are going to trigger our normal attack. So let's actually hit Q on the keyboard after selecting event, and let's say this is our normal attack. Normal attack gamepad. And let's do it for this one as well. Hit Q to bring up the comments. Let's say normal attack keyboard. Cool. So we could even go so far as to group this and you could say, you know, normal attack for the keyboard, normal keyboard attack. Let's do that. Da -da -da -da. Normal keyboard attack. There's an extra space there. And we can do the same thing for our gamepad, just because it's going to get a little bit nested here. Uh, game normal gamepad attack. And the more commented that I do it, I'd rather I'd rather do it more commented. That way, people aren't so confused. When you look at the file later on, you can actually figure out what's going on in this event here. So I've grouped it as our keyboard attack. This is our normal keyboard attack, and this is our normal gamepad attack. Cool. So now what we need to do is we need to actually add in our combo one attack. So let's take our normal gamepad attack and let's hit B on the keyboard. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this condition. So control C on the condition, not the event, the condition, hit paste. And I'm going to double click and change it. And I'm going to say, I want this one to be button B for my combo. So I'm going to hit button B. Okay, so now this is going to be our combo. And we actually have to go back to our player, go to our instance variables, and we have to make two new ones. We have to set, we have to make combo one. We have to make this Boolean. And let's hit OK. And let's add a new one for a combo two. And let's also make this one a Boolean as well. Cool. So now we have our normal attack, combo one, and combo two. So let's go here and let's control click this down. And instead of it being attacking, let's have it be combo one. Set the combo one to true. Cool. So we should be good there. Let's actually copy and paste again. And don't worry, we're going to edit this in a second. And let's set combo, oops, let's go here. And let's set combo two to true. Okay, so you're gonna notice a few things. One, we need to bop, pop these out of our normal gamepad attack and put them into their own groups. So let's do that. Let's hit G for this one. Let's call this combo one gamepad attack. And let's put this in here. And then let's hit G on the, again on the keyboard and let's call this combo two gamepad attack. And let's put that in here. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm gonna put this one on top here because it's the first one. Let's actually go in and edit this with our global variables that we made in our game event. So we need to hit C on this. We need to hit C and we need to go to our system. We need to compare global variables and we need to say this is going to be for attack one because attack one is equal to combo one. Oops, I should probably fix that. But uh, here's what we're gonna do. So we're going to say, Attack one animation is combo one, and we're gonna make that equal three, just like that. So if attack one animations equal three, then set combo one to true. So let me copy that, and let me put it into this condition. Double click that and change it to attack two. And let me go back to my game event here, and let me delete attack three animations. And let me rename this. Let me call this combo one animations and let me call this one combo two animations don't worry all of this will make sense in a bit here i i had a third attack that i was thinking about adding and i think that'll be up to you guys i want you guys to learn from this and maybe make your own attack 
that would be pretty cool. If not attack, you can also use this effect to make a blocking, dashing. There's so many other things that you can add to this. But let me see if you understand what's going on so far. So if you press B and attack one animations equals three, so if it's the third frame of attack one, then set combo one to true. And then same thing here, because we're pressing the same exact button, but we're checking two different variables. So only if attack two animations equals three, will it set the combo two to true. Okay, that's a bit confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. Now, one other thing I want to add here specifically for the gamepad is I want to actually copy and paste this, and I can get rid of that comment there. And what I want to do is I want to make another trigger. Now, I, want, I can't put this into an or event, but what I want to do is I want to say if button, uh, let's see, actually button pressed, and I want, to be, I want this to be, well, maybe I can't put this in an or event. Let's see if I can. That would be pretty cool. Cut that out, hit paste, no, I couldn't. Okay, double click, plugins, gamepad, on button pressed. In this case, we're gonna say right shoulder trigger and hit okay. So it's gonna do the exact same thing and it's not for our combos, it's only for our normal attack, but actually just like you would in an FPS game or any game where you have the right trigger be your actual shooting, that's what this is going to do. So this is going to be our right shoulder trigger, not our bumper, and it's going to actually, you hold down the right trigger, it's gonna hit our, our attack one, or normal attack, and same thing with X. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I'm not just rambling here. But what we need to do now is we need to copy and paste these two and put them into our keyboard attack and make them for our keyboard attack. So let's do that as well. Let's go over here, let's drop this down. And the only thing we need to do here is we need to pick a button for combo. So let me delete this and let me hit C on the keyboard. Let's go plugins, keyboard keyboard pressed and the one that I'm going to pick is going to be right next to X it's going to be C for combo and let's hit control C let's delete this condition here and let's hit control V there we go let's rename this to combo one keyboard attack and don't worry I do expect this to be a little confusing hopefully it's not but I think you should be able to get the hang of it at this point Hopefully you'll be able to follow along and let's hit okay there. And what we're going to do now is pretty much, I think that's it. I think we're all set up here. Uh, we're going to add some other stuff. What we can do now is we're just going to group this all together and call this our attack trigger state, just like that, except it went in there We grab that. And that way, in case we need to disable this altogether, we can. So there we go. Our attack trigger state is done. Let's hit save. Let's go to our game events. Let's go to our player states. And let's hit N on the keyboard and add our attack trigger state there. Cool. So now we have our new attack, attack trigger state. Now we just have to go out and make our actual attacks. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.